Hello everybody, my name is Kayla Rundle and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be working on my daily driver, aka the 2017 Honda Civic. It's an EXL, it's the hatchback. It's not this new generation, it's the previous generation. And I have the full brake kit. I have the rotors and pads for the front and rear of this Civic that I will be changing. I've never changed the brakes on this car whatsoever. So I am going a little overboard and changing them into drilled and slotted brake calipers, which I know some people question if that's worth it, but it's perfect for cooling. And these are, these do have like a coating on them. So they're extra protected. Ooh. I wanted to break open these up in front of you guys. It's so funny how small these rotors are compared to the Camaro. But here they are. They're beautiful. It's like the first like modification that I've done on the Civic. So very excited for that. All four are slotted and drilled. So I'll have no problem cooling off easy. Thankfully it is lightweight car, so I haven't had problems with the braking yet, but I'm excited to see how this will change it. And here we have probably the front pad since this box is way bigger than the other. And here we are. These pads are so little compared to the Camaro. <laughs> oh, does it not come with grease? These are the rear. Hey, yo, they're so cute. And on the box, these are the Optimum OEP series. So these were one of the top of the line rotor and pad setups on their website. So I'm excited to see how they'll do. So I got to get these wheel loose, jack up the car, and I think I'm gonna work like front to rear just so it's safer instead of having the car completely jacked up. Um, this car is way more simple than the Camaro because it's not slammed on the ground. But thank you R1 Concepts for sending me out these brakes. I'm excited to try these out. And for all you guys, if you guys have Civics, finally have a Civic video for you guys, so enjoy. it doesn't get on my hair. Well, we got the wheels off, pretty simple. I did have a little wheel lock, so I just had an extra key if you saw me use that. Now I'm gonna spray some WD-40 around this like center hub because sometimes the rotor will be kind of stuck just because of the rust on the hub and in the rotor if it's been on for like, a very long time. And I'm also gonna spray the WD-40 on the little rotor screw. Uh, that doesn't really do anything, it just holds the rotor into the hub. And that's, it's like a really soft metal, so sometimes it'll strip. So I'm just gonna put WD-40 in these areas to help fix those issues. I'm also gonna put them around the studs too, since that's where it's touching. Beautiful. All right, so I have some safety glasses that I put on because I've experienced brake cleaner in my eye before, so always be careful of that. But I got this fresh bottle of gum out brake cleaner. 
this guy and I'm just gonna clean all of like the suspension components in here. Uh, be careful not to spray this on any painted surface. And I'm gonna use all purpose cleaner and get everything else clean. Now I have a little bit of degreaser and I'm going to clean all my fender wells. I've always been kind of, <coughs> oh god it's strong, I've always been kind of crazy about keeping all the undersides of all my cars clean so whoever gets my cars in the future, you're welcome. It's also stuff nobody will see but when I'm working on it, it keeps my hands clean because I do have my nails done. Of course I'm doing a brake change so. A little crazy for having nails and doing this. All right, next up, I have to get the slide pins out to release this middle section of the caliper. And I've never worked on a car with multiple parts of the caliper. I only have like the big boy calipers like Willwoods and Brembo's. So got to remove the slide pins, which I know these are like 80 foot pounds. Got that loose. It's tight. I learned this trick from Matt. Just, I have to hit it to get it loose. Mm -hmm. I have to compress the pistons more, but yeah, it's dirty. And then put the caliper somewhere safe. I'm just gonna put it up here. So it doesn't fall off. So. And then there's these little pins that you want to squeeze and they come right out. And then same for this bottom one, just like that. See, you want to set aside these for later. And then the pad should come out. And then depending on the brakes that you get, you want to make sure that it has some shims on the brakes. So if they do not come the shims, you want to put these on the new ones, but we will have new ones on the R1 concept brakes. And then this one came out. We actually have like quite a lot of life left on these. As you can see, they're really thick. So we probably didn't need to change them, but might as well since I'm already into it. <laughs> And then we have to remove these little dust covers. Hopefully they pop out. Yay, those out. I gotta take these little clips out again, and then these pads should slide right out. There we go. Yeah. Yay. And the next one. And then this whole thing should just come right off. This is a caliper bracket and I'm going to clean this guy up. 
and where the shims go. Now I gotta get that rotor Phillips screw off. Now for this rotor screw, this thing gets stuck in there a lot. So I got the biggest Phillips head I could find, which is like a three. And I'm just gonna hammer it in to kind of loosen it up and then try to turn it out. There's no way. That bit is just like messed up already. I need Max's like snap on bits. Oh my. Kayla did it. The rotor's off. <laughs> How do we get this off now? Holy moly. Can you do it? Yes. First time ever drilling out a screw. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here's, can you see it? There's the head and the bottom part of the screw that I destroyed. Oh, that was a lot. It's like dark out, it took so long. Well, since I had to screw out the little rotor screw, I bought these little guys at AutoZone as replacements and I put a little bit of anti-C, so hopefully I don't have this problem in the future. Worst case, drilling it out was definitely the way to go. These ones are always so difficult. And I'm just gonna replace the screw into this one. It doesn't have to be too tight. I put these lug nuts on just to hold the rotor in place, just in case it was crooked. Not like it matters because the Camaro has floating rotors, but this brake, change, what, this brake change wasn't too bad. There are a few more parts than what the Camaro has, <laughs> but I'm very happy to have these all fresh and done. I am going to bleed the brakes on these with the AMS Oil Brake Fluid Dot 3, and then I might paint these and take them apart later on. Well guys, that finishes the front brakes on my Civic and stay tuned for part two. I will be doing the rear brakes, which are the more difficult brakes 
on the Civic because of the brake actuator. So I have a full video, so stay tuned for that. It'll be posted in a couple days from now to explain that entire process so you do not mess up the electronic system in the car because it will create warnings on your dash if you do not install or take it up, disassemble it properly. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. I will also be doing a brake fluid flush in the next video thanks to Amsoil. I'm using their DOT3 uh, brake fluid. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys. And as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the video description. I try my best to get back to every single one of you. So I hope you all have an amazing day or night, whatever time it is. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.